I want verse 7. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Not a verse of scripture that you hear a lot in church. If I would have a title, I would simply name this sermon Peter. I want to talk about Peter just a, a little while, but this particular verse got my attention. I told someone that I was going to preach a particular sermon this morning on Friday night. And on yesterday, God changed my directions. Peter is a, we would like to say, one of the greatest apostles that ever lived. And sometimes we get him confused with being the rock because he had the confession uh, with Jesus that he was the Christ. And he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. But Jesus was not talking about Peter. He was talking about the confession that Peter made. Now, Peter's name does mean rock. But that's called Petros. And Petros is a small rock. But Jesus had reference to Petra, which is a massive rock. But he also had reference to himself when he said, upon this rock. Um, I'll build my church. This this Peter was the first apostle, first called apostle. He was he was the the the, the first one that Jesus told, "Follow me." He 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 was shipping, fishing. They didn't catch anything. So Jesus got on Peter's uh, boat and said, let me just push a little way from the show here and let me preach a little bit. And you know, you know it, it wasn't what he was preaching out of. It was what he was preaching. But at the end of the sermon, he asked him to thrust out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Peter said, Master, we've toiled all night. We've caught nothing. And the strange thing about this particular teaching is that the fish during that time didn't, didn't bite during the daytime. They, they got in your net at night. So I'm a professional fisherman, and we've been out all night. I know you know fish out there, but, but it had to be something about the way that Jesus talked. It had to be something in the voice of, of Jesus that caused Peter to thrust out. Oh, Shedaha. The, the thrust out. Uh, don't let me get too happy because I said that we wasn't going to jump. Um, thrust out a, 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 a little ways. And he, but he said, at thy word. So it had to be something in the way that Jesus talked for him to have faith enough to cast his net. And as he cast his, his, his net, they brought in a, so many fish that the boat began to sink. And they had pardon of the sons of Zebedee, and James and John, the sons of thunder. He beckoned them over and they filled their ship up and their boat began to sink. And Jesus fell on his Peter fell on his knees and told Jesus, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And then Jesus let Peter know, you're the reason I'm on the boat. Uh, from henceforth, uh, Peter, you're going to catch men. Yes, so he's the, he, he's the first apostle, first one called. 
he, 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 the first to be called apostle. God made it so that Peter was first with everything. Peter was, he was, he was an impulsive fella. Always like to talk out. In fact, Peter, Peter, Peter was the first one to say something like, how many times should I forgive my brother? You got to watch knife totals. Yeah, knife totals will cut you. Peter, Peter would be the one that would be like the backbone of the 12. He had leader qualities. He would have the opportunity after, after telling Jesus who he was, he would have the opportunity to be a part of the inner circle. Three apostles that would go everywhere that Jesus went. But these three would have the opportunity to be on the mountain of transfiguration. While on the, the mountain, they're going to see Jesus transfigured. Peter, John, and James, they build some tabernacles right quick. And he goes, Lord, I want you to do that. Um, but I want you to, 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 to hold your peace and don't tell nobody about this to after the resurrection. He would be in the company of Jesus when he would raise Jairus' daughter uh, from the dead. He, he'd be there as, as a watchman while Jesus prayed in the garden of uh, Gethsemane. He would, he would be there when Jesus said, go and find me a donkey. Time for me to ride down that righteous trail. You can't be a king unless you ride a donkey down the right trail. He was there when he said, prepare me the upper room. Uh, that I could do this last supper with you. You know, when, 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 when God is using you greatly, you have greater opposition. Yes. When, 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 when there's a greater anointing upon your life, there's a greater challenge from uh, the enemy. Peter was one that would talk boldly and tell Jesus, I don't care what the rest of them do, I won't let you die. Cut off marriages here to prove. But I need Greg to go to Luke for me. 22, 31, 32. You're going to find out that when you're working great for God and God is using you, you got an opponent. I believe he told him. The devil want to have you yes, uh, that he may sift you as wheat. Yes, Watch out, neighbor. Yes, Peter, Peter going to learn something, but I don't want to get on that right now because I, I get off my point. But Peter learned some sense through this particular situation. Yes. Lord, have mercy. I'm getting happy, y'all. He says, Satan desire to have you that it may sift you as wheat. But I have I, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And if I've been working for the Lord lately, when you work for the Lord, you have a few more temptations. Pew Walmart don't have the same temptation as laboring folk. Uh, but I love what he said. He said, when I'm praying for you, that your faith fail not. Yes, and when thou art converted, 
Converted. Converted sound like you're from the fall. Yes, sir. You're what we've been living. Uh, converted sound like Peter finna mess up. When thou art converted. Come on, home, Peter. When, 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 when thou go to Peter. You got the keys. I got to get you back right. I got to pray for you. Don't you let that little bit of mess up you made cause you to back up. Yep. You may have blown it, but Jesus is still praying for you. Oh, that's all right. Hallelujah. Somebody didn't feel like coming to church this morning because they messed up last week. But God saying, Peter, you still got value. Don't let the temptations and troubles and sin from yesterday cause you not to come back. He said, when thou art converted, I need you to do so. I need you to strengthen your brother. See, not that you got to fall, but sometimes the experience of a fall, you can talk like King David. Lord, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. If you if you if you restore me, I teach transgressors. I won't let my mistake be a mistake. I'm gonna let my mistake be a teaching tool. Yes. Hallelujah. When I see, like Solomon said, that young man is void of an understanding. Yes, Hallelujah. Went into a strange woman. Glory. I'm going to be able to help somebody out. Watch out for that strange woman. Can't talk like I want to. Watch out. Woo. For that sweet talking dude. Ain't never been to school, but he knows Shakespeare. Ain't never been to school. Hallelujah. But remember all those romantic poems. Glory, he can tweedle it deep. Hallelujah. Can't add, can't find a job, but know how to whisper to you. I wish I <laughs> Glory. Yes, Peter going to tell Jesus, I won't do it. Yes, sir. But a few verses later, we're going to see Peter is going to deny Jesus. Yes, sir. Help me, Holy Ghost. And what I love about it, Jesus prophesied to him, told him what was going to happen before it happened. Do you know God knows you're going to mess up before you mess up? Mama. I better leave that late. Because I don't, I don't want you plotting on messing up and saying God knew it. So I'll be kept high about that one. Amen. Hallelujah. But he knew your thoughts are false. Yeah. God's so good. God will forgive you and bless you today and know you're going to mess up tomorrow. Yes, God will know you're going to blow it. And he still will, will not withhold that good thing uh, that he promised you. But he tells you before the cop crowed twice, you're going to deny me thrice. The first time he's going to tell him, I'm not with him. The second time he's going to swear. The third time he's going to go to cussing. I wouldn't have him. Give him around them people that's causing you to cuss. But uh, he denied Jesus. And, and uh, how did this apply to me, Rev? See, you deny Jesus when you go in that whole house and act like you don't know him. You deny Jesus when you fornicate. You deny Jesus when you commit adultery. You say, I don't know him. I wish I had Mr. Help. Say, come on home, Peter. The Lord told me to tell you today, Peter, it's time to get yourself together. You've been wrestling. You've been messing up long enough. You know the proper antics. You know how to shout. You know how to speak in tongues. You know how to throw the crowd off. But God I see your heart. I search the ridge. God I search the ridge of your heart. I can see what's in your heart. You can fool the people. 
some of the time. But you can't get by God. He said, my eyes are the same in the midnight as they are in the noonday. God told me to tell you, Peter, it's time to get it together. Peter, you got work to do. Peter, you chasing horse and you're supposed to be winning souls. Get that name hot. I said, Peter, you got work to do. You're smoking dope and you're supposed to be building the church. Peter, you got work to do. Get that neighbor high five. Say, neighbor, whether you're messed up or not, you got work. You got work to do. It's time. I need 16 and 7. Listen, this is where God blows my mind is this. Peter got the keys. He's the head of the church. He's being used mightily by God. He's been anointed. He's raised the dead. He's laid hands on the sick. He's seen the sick recover. He has been used mightily. And in Peter's mind, I would imagine that he feels like he's not even worthy to go back to Jesus. When the cock crowed, they say he went out immediately and he wept. Yeah. Yes, sir. He, he, he cried because he had denied Jesus. And sometimes it ain't so much in here could go show Sometimes it ain't so much about the God to forgive you. Not we got to forgive ourselves. If I can get you back to the altar, <laughs> see you judging yourself, and when you judge yourself, you won't tell you won't ask God to forgive you. But God knew you were gonna mess up before you messed up, and I'm praying for you that you get back. So because of his position, he had to get a special invitation. He got an invitation from the angel. If he wasn't wrestling with his mess up, why would his name be? It was, it was 11 men. The angel didn't call 11 names. He said, my disciples and Peter. Because Peter is heartbroken. Peter is the one who said, let's go back to fishing. Peter forgot about walking with him. He said, let me go back to fishing. I don't even feel good enough or well enough to preach no more. Glory. I can't talk like a woman. But I talked to someone that was a preacher a while ago. And, and they said, they said, I'm not going to preach no more about holiness because I done messed up. And they say in the middle of their thoughts, say God told them, "Hey, you got experience now. Get up and tell the people." See, we had to write about Bathsheba. They had to put Bathsheba in the Bible so you can learn, and I can teach somebody. Don't make that same mistake. Come on back, Peter. You can write, be sober, and be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil. And everybody got the same adversary. The devil don't care nothing about you, baby. Hallelujah. Don't think the devil just on my trail and not on your trail. So, they said, tell my disciple and Peter, isn't it wonderful? To know that when you mess up, Jesus is still praying for you. Yes. Isn't it good to know why you are in the valley? Yeah. Yes, Isn't it good to know that why you're pitching your pity party, how you shouldn't have messed up like that? Yeah. That Jesus is praying for you. Yes. Glory. Glory. Told John, said, John, write this. 
And I love what John wrote. First of all, John wrote, if we say we have not sinned, we do lie. John had an accurate account. See, we got Peter's account because he followed Jesus. But if you read and examine the scripture, you find out every disciple denied him. Oh. Yes, sir. So when John said, when you say you have not sinned, you lie. Yeah. See, when you say you ain't never messed up, you lie. You done messed up somewhere, but God said, come on, back. Yes, Glory. I'm praying for you. Uh, we got a song we sing. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. And I'm so glad they prayed. And I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Then they go down the line, the preacher. The preacher prayed. Yeah. Now stop, 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 stop. Now, 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 now stop. Right there. Just stick Jesus in there. Jesus prayed for me. Yes, sir. Had me on his mind. And he took the time. And he took the time to pray for me. Tell his neighbor, you may have gotten away. You may have messed up last night. You may have messed up last week, but Jesus is praying for you. Glory. The Bible says he'll leave 90 and none to go get the one. Hallelujah. God will let me preach a message for one person in this church to get you. God loves you so much. He don't want you to miss it. Sit down. Peter gets a direct invitation. Come on back, Peter. Some people with their mistake is still the best person for the job. Some people with their mistake are better than anyone else you can put in that position to do their job. Couldn't nobody else do Lette, what Peter had to do. Be careful before you throw me away when I mess up. I may still be the best person for the job. I wish I had me. I wish I had Somebody say, Peter, you got to get up and brush yourself off and get back in the race. It reminds me of Moses when they messed up and served the golden calf. Hallelujah. When Moses got back, he said, who's on the Lord's side? Everybody in sin. Everybody messing up. But who's on the Lord's side? Let it come unto me. Ask thy neighbor whose side. That's your own. I don't want to hear about how dirty you are. You're already dirty. But I want to tell you about who can clean you up. Give that neighbor high five. I said, neighbor, before you talk about Peter, some theologians suggest that the twelve was called the dirty dozen. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm a po. They had to be the dirty dozen because my Bible tell me for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Before you call me dirty, you better wash yourself. And you can't do it with water. You got to do it with blood. Come on home, Peter. Peter. Oh, God, how long have you been out there? How long have you been messing up? God told me to tell you, come on home. It's time to 
get it right. God got work. Said, I ain't gonna be long. Lord's willing. Peter got an invitation to come back. If Jesus said, when thou art converted, that means the denial was a fall. So if you fail, you got to be converted to get back in the race. Peter comes, Jesus restores him. Fifty days later, the man that we had to go get and bring him back, Fifty days later, he preached the first sermon. Thank God for John, Zebedee, and them. But they didn't have the sermon. Fifty days later, when they need somebody to preach, 11 men, by now they made Matthias a disciple. 11 men step back and say, Peter, you know what he told you. They know he blowed it, but you still got the microphone. He preached the first sermon on the day of Pentecost. Say, neighbor, if you done messed up and got back right, you got something to say. If a brother be overtaken in a fault, he was a spiritual. I'm spiritual because I done been there. I done done that and I done got back up. He was a spiritual. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Get that neighbor. I say, neighbor, won't you help me? Restore somebody. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. His first sermon, 3,000 souls get saved. Hallelujah. The gate beautiful, one gets saved. Chapter 4, 5,000 get saved. Get that neighbor hop. I said, neighbor, look how many souls are in you. Get back up. You might not get 3,000 in a day, but you sure get 3,000 in a lifetime. I wish I had me somebody time to get over yourself. Come out of that pity party and know that God still loves you. I heard I heard John say my little children I write to you that you sin not but if any man sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous say neighbor God has already made the way for you to come back home I wish I had me somebody look at Peter going to jail walking by people in a shadow is healing folk look at Peter raising doctors from the dead look at Peter got the kings of the kingdom Jews getting saved Samaritans getting saved Gentiles getting saved get that neighbor high I said neighbor there's the value in you come on Peter get back up I wish I had you swore you'd never mess up you swore you'd never turn your back on God you swore you'd never do it again but you did now God said come on going to prison and Acts chapter 12 an angel let him out of jail I wish I had me somebody tell that neighbor God got work for you to do but you can't do it in sin you gotta come out of your sin that you can do what God has for you I wish I had somebody look at Peter he's there when they make the decision that the Gentiles ain't gotta be circumcised he's there I wish I had me somebody oh Lord give him a praise write two books 
And some theologians suggest that first Peter was written to the Gentiles, the one he had a problem with. Then second Peter was giving me a new hope, telling you and I how to survive, telling us how to live, and then reminded us, you got a hope over in Zion. I wish I had somebody this gonna pass away, but I need you to have hope because there's gonna be a great reunion in the sky. Get that name high five. Say, come on, Peter. Let's get it together. I wish I had some help. I preached a little while ago about John Mark. Now I understand why Peter had so much compassion for John Mark because he messed up himself. I wish I had somebody. He was a narrator. He was the spokesman. He was the dictator for the book of Mark. And Mark wrote, listen to Peter. Get that name. How about the name? You might even have a book to write. You can Last, but not least, Peter came to a place where he had to fold up his tent. And the man had gained so much respect for Jesus. I don't mind you crucifying me. I don't mind you nearly went to the cross but listen turn me upside down I, I, I can't I, did, oh, I can't see myself going to the cross upright I can't see being in the position of a perfect Jesus and I don't blow it I, I, I can't comprehend getting on the cross like he did I don't mind you putting the spear in me but turn me upside down He had respect for Jesus. Even in his death, he never gave up. My word to you, I want everybody to come to the altar. I don't care how good you think you're living. I want you to come to this altar.